Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. Welcome. It's so great to have all of you tune us in and turn us on. We got a great lineup for you again today. I am kicking it off. Okay, think about this. Sovereignty in Action, my very special guest, host of an incredible show, Dr. Tassel Shanebrook. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about her in a minute, but I want to take a shout out to Mr. Benny and Jacob. Just say hi to my two producers today. Hope you all are doing okay. I'm doing all right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's beautiful outside. Love that. <laughs> I had, yeah. I had to poke okay, him. so listen, <laughs> guess what I'm doing this Sunday? Playing table tennis. No, that's Saturday. Oh, my bad, my bad. But for the first time in like, what is it, three or four years, one of, one of our, Bob, Coach Bob, is having a party at his house. Wow. So we're going over to his house, which happens to be right up the road here from me. And when ping pong people get together, I'm just saying, y'all may think y'all have potlucks and you have Texas has the barbecue, but trust me, when ping pong people get together and you have in front of you multicultural, multi-generational, multi-dimensional people that show up and it is a potluck, get ready for everything from pulled pork <laughs> to pastrami. Ooh. That's what I'm saying. But you know, the reason I'm talking about it, it is the first time, Benny, in a really long time that th that event like that happens, mm -hmm. right? And we of used course. to do that all the time. Yep. And so the reason I'm saying it is this. I know what's happening. I know because I have felt it myself. I know, and you're gonna hear it today from Dr. Tassel, you're gonna hear this. I know that we come on the show and we're upbeat and we're positive and all of our hosts are, but we truly understand the underpinnings of the dynamic nature of what everyone has been through. And despite that, we have people like my guest today that has created a way and a platform, has created something specifically to say, I know what we're going through and I know there is a way forward. See, that's what you're going to hear from her today. Not just about who she is and what she does because she, she is and does a lot. But if this is somebody that understands the world of psychotherapy, understands the world of what it means to come out in the world as a certified hypnotherapist, Kundalini yoga, instructor, Reiki master, shamanic practitioner. I mean, think about this. When you think about somebody like Dr. Tesla, right? You think about what I just said. Now you're going to hear about what she has created in this show, an announcement. And then you see that she's been featured in magazines, on shows. She has been out there in the world crafting solutions, perfection of solutions for where we are in the world and where we need to go. Today's show, we're going to kick it off right out of the gate, talking about you. Dr. Tasso, great to have you here. Oh, great to be here. Thank you so much for everything you shared. I'm humbled to be here and to talk to you. Um, look, you and I know that we show up in the world because we have a deep interest in making this a better place. And I've said this a million times before, sometimes we show up as if our lives are just the slide and glide. We just like on the water park. 
But I want to just start off with this because you're going to talk about you matter. And I want to ask you this question about yourself and your journey and all the things you've done. You know, getting to you matter. You could not have gotten there without overcoming challenges and obstacles. What are some of those you had to overcome to get you right here today? Yeah, great question. Uh, I think many of us have experienced this in our childhood. I, I think it's quite common in our, our broken Western culture, but I grew up very much feeling that I did not matter. Um, I did not matter in terms of my dreams. I did not matter in terms of my feelings. I did not matter in terms of how I wanted to live my life in any way. I was more of a, uh, a puppet that was sort of uh, puppet mastered by my parents and school teachers. And, and I think this is very common and uh, really no, I have love towards all of those people in my childhood. They were doing the best they could. They came from the same culture. They did not create these, uh, these principles, these ways of being, they were also indoctrinated into it as well. So only love and forgiveness, uh, but a distinct orientation that I did not matter, that I needed to disappear, that I needed to obey and please others. And uh, also that I only had any significance um, in terms of my relation to others and how I could sort of do things to make them feel more comfortable. And you know what? Thank you for that. Because um, we have just gone through a time in our lives globally around the world where the question mark around who we are, how am I showing up every day? Am I able to take care of myself, right? Has been in full question. Because, and, 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 and you know this and I know this, right? Uh, we're talking about a global event which literally on a dime, had people turn to a way of being which they had not experienced before, right? And when you turn to that and you do not have the tools, right? Don't you think they really struggled? I mean, I'm, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm projecting because there are points in time, especially through, through the pandemic, where you just weren't sure that you did matter, right? I think our culture continually indoctrinates us, brainwashes us into the orientation that we don't matter, uh, meaning our unique, authentic self does not matter, that we constantly need to contort ourselves into some uh, mask to meet the societal needs of what the society wants us to be. Look. Let's talk about this from your perspective, right? You know, growing up, you ask us the question, do you feel like you matter? Yeah. Now, I have, I'm almost like a split personality when you think about growing up, right? You know, I have this one side of me that grew up with parts of my family being very loving, very caring. I have this other side you know, that I got to understand later where I totally felt like I wasn't cared for, right? And I think that's probably true of a lot of people. But what is the impact of this? What is the impact of not feeling like you matter, Dr. Tassel? Uh, the impact is very severe. And what I want to really emphasize is it's invisible. There are many types of traumas that a child can receive. Uh, all of them are, are very harmful, but this type of emotional trauma is invisible. So most of us who grew up being indoctrinated that we did not matter, it just became a, a way of life. It just became mm -hmm. our unconscious um, cognitive mindset. And we were, and we're not, and we were not even really aware of it. Mm. And so it can be very difficult to come to even be aware that that's going on. It just becomes the default. It becomes so normal. So this is why this type of trauma is so insidious. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it can also happen in any type of environment. It can happen in wealthy households and in, in less wealthy households. 
in in households where it seems like a child is being taken care of, um, but who they really are is not being honored, is not being respected, is being squashed. And and the child doesn't is not even really aware of it. Yeah. Look, we're talking about this today. Uh, for those of you just tuning in, thank you for doing that. Uh, very special guest, Dr. Tassel Chainbrook. But we're talking about this because sovereignty in action, you have developed four powerful principles of sovereignty that brings us back to ourselves. We happen to be talking about the first one, you matter. But let's give everybody just a little sneak peek of what the other three are before we get to talk about them. Because this is really, this is a four part solution if I might call it that. And when we talk about sovereignty, we're talking about, hello, uh, do you wanna get back to yourself? Like your true self, right? Like not that, not that self for you that you just don't even recognize, right? Yeah, so so red flags, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say yeah. the four points in just a second. But red Self flags up. are: do do you feel depressed? Do you feel not excited about your life? Are your relationships unfulfilling? Is your body not feeling great to you? Uh, are you struggling as a parent? Are you struggling in your work? These are all warning signs that you may not be in your full sovereignty. So these four solutions are number one, I matter. I matter. My life matters. My preferences matter. My dreams matter. My feelings matter. My goals matter. I matter. Apart from the entire society, apart from anyone else's expectations of me, I matter. Number two, I live in my truth. It's not always easy to see the truth. It's very painful. And sometimes it may lead to uh, things we need to let go of, things that need to fall away, changes that need to be made. But the path forward, the path to your most joyful, empowered life is by first living in your truth and seeing the truth of all that is around you. Um, the third part is I connect with my dreams for my life. I lead from my heart. I connect with what is most precious to me. What are my deepest desires? How do I want to live my beautiful life apart from everyone else? And the fourth one is I honor myself. I trust myself and I am the authority in my life. I follow my guidance, period. The reason I love these, and we're going to really take, we're going to take a walk with some of these. We're going to take a walk in a journey because, you know, you have a very unique and special way to help people on that pathway. Um, I think this is all tied into, to if I, if I could just bring it up for a minute, uh, you and I are creating some interesting things for ourselves, right? Interesting ways to take our work and our experience and come to the forefront. You you and I just talked about this and out of this comes a brand new show with a very interesting title. Uh, should we tell people what it is? Because then they will get a sense of why we are talking about this right now. Yes. So the title of my new show uh, with wonderful assistance from Dr. Pat is Metamorphosis, a transformational uh, journey. And it's about transforming your world naturally and supernaturally from the inside out. This is and, why we're right. Yeah. This is why we're talking about it, right? Because you're gonna finish telling us about this. It is very hard to create something like this and not be impacted personally and have your journey modified. Yeah, yeah, uh, I'm still in my metamorphosis. <clears throat> I think we all are. We're all becoming more expanded versions of ourselves. And, um, and, it's, and it's quite a process. And the, the show is really to be a friend, to be a guide, to be support for all of us. We're, we're all on this journey. Every single one of us is in some stage of metamorphosis on this planet. Uh, our soul is, is in a, an eternal metamorphosis. And, 
it's a beautiful and and at times really challenging experience. <laughs> It is. And, you know, look at us laughing. So we're like <laughs> laughing at ourselves, right? And, and that's what I love about this, because we're going to walk all of you through this. And I love that what you came out at the gate with was you matter. I want everybody to wrap your mind around that. Now, there are people that can work with you directly. Let's make sure we give out your website. Can we do that right now? And then we're going to go on to, we're not even going to take a little break here. We're going to just go right over to Oh boy. Oh boy. Live in your truth. But before we go there, how do people find you? Let's give them your website. They can read all about you, all the great things you're doing and how to work with you. So go ahead and do that if you could. Oh, thank you. Yes. My website is just my name, uh, drtassel.com. D-R-T-A-S-S-E-L. Drtassel.com. Very easy. Very and easy. People are going to want to go over there and take a look at that. Now, Benny and I were just talking about, we had a little chat before the show, before the show, before the show this morning, because this idea of living your truth, man, have we heard that phrase a million times, but let's talk about what that means. And while it sounds so seductive and so, mm, like right there, that in itself comes with its own challenges because we really have to look at ourselves to do this one, don't we? This is, yeah, it's, it's, um, it seems simple. Okay, I'm just going to live in my truth. I'm just going to feel my truth. It, it, it's, it's a fairly simple concept, but putting it into practice is challenging because we often have crafted our lives around some stories and illusions that when we really look at them, they may fall apart. Uh, and I'll just give an example that 10 years ago, I was in a marriage, um, also in a step family and uh, living in a place that really wasn't resonant for me. And I was really unhappy. I was really depressed and I didn't really understand why because I was really attached to staying in my illusions and my stories because if I didn't, I didn't know sort of what to do with my life. I, have, I had kids with uh, my now ex-husband, et cetera. So what I'm trying to get at is when, when we go into the truth, okay, so really why am I depressed? Oh, okay, I'm depressed because I, I really don't have a connection with my husband. I'm depressed because I really don't like where I'm living. I'm depressed because I really don't, I'm not following my dream for my career. Okay, that's the truth. And I, I need to sit with that. And I don't, my human doesn't even know what to do with that. What do I do with that? Where do I go? What, what's the first step? It just seems overwhelming. So living in our truth um, can seem really overwhelming to look at all the things that are really not aligned, that are not really resonant with our soul. Yeah. And the, the beauty here, the, um, what you got in your back pocket is we don't have to figure it all out. We can have faith that if we just live in our truth, the universe, spirit, God, however you want to uh, describe it, is going to come in and support us because we're always broadcasting. So if we're broadcasting an energy of, well, okay, this it's, it's okay, my marriage, it's okay, it's not that bad, then the universe is receiving that message and saying, okay, she's okay with that. But if I'm broadcasting a message that says, you know what, this is not okay, I am not in alignment. I am not living my best life. Then the universe hears that and is going to support the, the, the transformation. So we, if we are honest with ourselves, then the universe hears our truth. Yeah. And, then, and then it's going to help carry us forward. So we have to have faith. And faith is actually my middle name. <laughs> uh, literally my middle name. So we take that leap of faith to just first be in our truth. And honestly, I think this is the hardest step of the entire process. 
yeah. is taking that leap of faith to just be in your truth. Yeah. Okay. I want to break it down a little bit. Let's get into it because I want to just go over some of the things that get in the way of this. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, I was just hit with two of them in two days. And I had to really look at myself closely, really objectively as a business person. And so look, we are influenced by other people that, oh, wait a minute, I'm going to live in your truth of me and I'm not going to live in my truth of me, right? Oh, wait, I'm more worried about how I'm going to please you today, even at the cost of myself, maybe my family, maybe my business. Hello, right? And these are the things. So let's talk about what is your truth and how these other things, like you just mentioned about the law of attraction, how they get in the way. Because okay. it's not always easy, Dr. Tassel, right? I mean, I'm not sitting here saying to you today, I've had two, I would call them two calls with two people this week that I had to find my inner compassion to have the conversation, yet keep my business hat on. That is one of the dichotomies of life, right? There are business people that go into, you know this, and I know this, we've worked with them. They go into business and they don't care that you're even a human being. You're like, you're like a bank account, but you have to find that balance and to come to the truth of who you are in all areas of your life, business, relationships, right? You know, your physical body. That's what you're talking about today, aren't you? Yes. And you bring up something that I think we can really emphasize is that often we think uh, our survival, our thriving, our power is through other people. That if I just please this other person, if I do kind of what they want to do, then, okay, then it'll be good for me. Mm, no, it's the opposite. Our power is inside of us. It's in our truth. It is in our hand-to-hand -hand union with the universe. That is our power. We give our power away when we think we have to be obedient to other people and their agendas. We're literally leeching our power. Our power is in our truth and our alignment. And that is when the universe really works through us and literally can create miracles in our lives. Yeah. This doesn't go without saying, if we could just take a moment, there are some things we innately know how to do, but you're talking about this. You're going to cover it on your show, Metamorphosis. You're going to cover it. You're going to really help people walk through these things. But this one particular area, this idea of truth, this is a lifelong journey. Now, I know some people that I think they were born knowing their truth. I don't know what happened to them, right? Maybe they weren't influenced. They've had a couple of hiccups, but they're, they were very clear from early on in their years, right? This is who I am. This is where I want to go, right? That's like an anomaly. Those are not everybody. Because aren't we now faced with more outside influences than we have ever been faced with? Ever. Our whole society is largely built upon brainwashing us. Truly, uh, from the moment we enter school, most schools, not all schools, there are, there are some lights in, this, in the school system, but most schools, it's all about, you will do what I tell you to do. You will study what I tell you to study. You will think the way I tell you to think. From the get-go, we are asked to abandon ourselves, abandon our guidance, abandon our truth, um, Many company environments are very much like that as well. Uh, a, a lot of parenting is like that. Uh, even ironically, the mental health system of, of which I am a part of, I have a PhD in psychotherapy. Um, ironically, the mental health system is largely of that same vein as well. I am the expert. I will diagnose you. I will tell you how you are injured and I will tell you how to fix yourself because you're broken. So from the get-go, we're all brainwashed and indoctrinated into thinking we can't trust ourselves. 
we have to listen to everyone else and you know look at the state that the world is in with with this type of orientation it's a hot mess <laughs> and so we the the world is depending on us to come back to ourselves to come back to our divine guidance to come back to the dreams that we are here to manifest and that is how we transform the planet and that's really the crux of it. You know, I, let me ask you this question before we go to break. You know, I, I have come to the conclusion that when something is in front of me, and it doesn't matter what it is, but if something is in front of me, especially with another person, it is there to prepare me for where I really want to go. And until, I, I, until I'm able to really understand the truth of who I am in this one situation, I'm going to have to keep working on it. And it is an interesting dynamic, whether that's you're in a relationship with somebody and you keep getting in them relationships with those people that over and over again, you're like, this looks like my ex. Yeah, it, it pretty much is your ex, but different face, maybe more hair, who knows, right? But this is truly an attraction you've done. Understanding the truth of who we are doesn't it help us break these patterns? Yes, I love what you, you just shared. And really, we can just see life as our guru. Whatever life is bringing into us is what we are magnetizing in and is meant to usually be to illuminate something, to be a teacher to us, to show us something. And often it's about self-love. Often it's about challenges or traumas that that really want to be acknowledged and transmuted. So every person that comes into your life is a teacher. Every situation that comes into your life is a teacher. And if we can just hold this orientation of curiosity, just step back a little bit, curiosity, what, what is there, what is, what is here for me to see? What feelings come up for me in this situation? Do I even recall certain events, situations in the past that these feelings are really stirring up? What needs to be felt here? And what insight might I have on the other end? Wow, I love those. Okay, we're gonna take a short break. When we come back, um, more about this. Are you ready? This idea of sovereignty and action, these four powerful principles that bring us back to ourselves, I want to ask you all this question and think about this when we go to break. If you're pretty much thinking, well, you know, I'm kind of there. Have you felt lonely lately? Have you feel like you're just killing time before you die? Are you thinking to yourself, man, I have a lot of great projects going on. I think I'm moving forward in my life. It feels hard. Or are you at that place where you've got everything in perfection for you? Are you at that place? Because when we come back, Dr. Tassel is going to share this third principle. And I really do believe without this third principle, it doesn't matter how great you think you are doing. Got to ask yourself, is there more? Let's take a short break, everybody. Benny? Jacob, we'll be right back. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Uh, look, I am so thrilled to introduce you to my friend and colleague, Dr. Tassel, of course, Dr. Tassel Shanebrook. Um, and before we get into this third thing, okay, and Benny, I'm not, I'm not even going to bring up like the whole Sandman series, I, I, what I just did, didn't I? <laughs> <Too late. laughs> we're going to talk about number three number three from the way dr tassel talks about it you're going to have to really ask yourself how do i get there you're going to hear about in a minute but i want to hear more if you could share i don't know what you can share a lot of changes a lot of announcements a lot of cool things right if you could talk more about your show 
And then you have some other events going on. So can you can, give, give us a rundown here of what you're up to? Yeah, so the Metamorphosis show premieres a week from today, uh, almost at the same time, at uh, noon Eastern. Yeah. Benny will give us the applause uh, sound effect <laughs> in a second. I'm very happy, right, on Transformation Talk Radio. Thank you for that. We're excited about that. Are you excited? Yeah, I'm really excited. And I, I think what's really exciting about this show in particular is it's it combines my more linear uh, clinical background with my more intuitive, shamanic, magical background. So it's, it's really the marriage of both of these. And that's why the show's tagline is transform naturally and supernaturally. So we're going to talk about all the sciencey stuff, all the more mainstream uh, hypnoth. I'm also a certified hypnotherapist. All the ways that we can uh, transform in the more linear sense, and then we're also going to talk about all the ways we can transform, uh, sort of in the more unseen way, the more magical way. So it's really exciting for me. Uh, I love talking about all of this. It's been transformative for me in my life to actually really experience magic. Um, one of the ways I really experience magic is through shamanic journeying, which I'll talk a lot about in the show, but it's just it's so much fun and has brought so much healing and insight and, and magic to my life. I love it. Uh, talking about this you know i woke up the other day and you're going to talk about dreams and heart dreams in a minute but i i i day i'm a day i'm a heart daydreamer okay uh, now i dream at night but i don't know but i'm really i see these the other day i woke up you ready and i saw us you and me and the jessica and the linda and the some of the other hosts like doc martin like some of the other people we were like in peru Oh, how amazing. On a journey. And we were just getting ready for like an ayahuasca ceremony. And then oh. I woke up. But that's what I love about what you're talking about. Because, see, you and I are of this world, too. Yes. Yeah. I've had a lot of um, memories in the past few years of other lifetimes where I was a shaman. And uh, in this lifetime, I you know, I have this doctor title and I, I kind of felt in a box like, okay, I'm, I'm a doctor of psychotherapy. I have to act a certain way. I have to maybe practice a certain way, but this other part of me, this really soul part of me as a shaman was really wanting to come through. So, and this is what we're going to talk about on the metamorphosis show is allowing all of these aspects of all of us to come through, not just from this lifetime, but all the gifts and talents and remembrances from all the parallel lifetimes that, that we're living as well. So that we come in as a multidimensional being uh, and wow, talk about power just to have all these gifts uh, from all these different lifetimes is amazing. Yeah. Look, what I love about this is we can take things that are quite conceptual, if we might say, and because they're quite conceptual, we can come up with the four principles. I want to get to this next one. And then Benny and Jacob, we're just going to roll to the top of the hour. Connect with your dreams for your life. Yes. Like, so, on. okay. So just like, let's just do a slight little quick practice here. If you just say the phrase, my heartfelt dreams, if you just feel that in your body, if you just close your eyes and just that phrase, my heartfelt dreams, just tune in. How does that feel to your body? What feelings, what energies might come up, maybe excitement or, oh my goodness, can I really even think about that? And let, let's take this further. Let's, let's stay in our bodies for a few moments. And I'm going to invite everyone to just visualize your consciousness dropping down from your brain into your heart. 
can just sort of picture an image of your precious consciousness just dropping right into your heart. Now we're in your heart mind. This precious, precious space, which is the connection point to the universe to unconditional love and to your most deepest heartfelt desires. And in this precious space, I'm just gonna invite everyone, if it's resonant, to just ask your heart right now. You can say it out loud, you can say it internally. What are my deepest heartfelt desires for this lifetime? What are they? Please show me. and just see what arises. You might see an image, might hear something, you might see some words. What are my deepest heartfelt desires for this lifetime? What are my most beautiful dreams for this lifetime? And it's really interesting because it's often a bit different from the dreams that we might yeah. kind of think about up here because these are somewhat in a container of what we think is possible. It's, it, it's a little hard for us to totally connect with these heartfelt dreams if we don't know how yeah. they're gonna happen, how they're gonna unfold. So just dropping into our heart and inquiring there is a wonderful starting point. I got to tell you, can I tell you what came up for me, which yes. totally shocked me. Please, oh good. Shocked you got me. Right? Okay, okay, awesome. So I bet everybody would be expecting and for me to say something about the network. Okay. Right. Yes. Yes, I'm sure that's there. And th but there's a lot of thought dr going on with that. That is not what came up for me. Look, I have had the honor and the privilege of having a best friend in my life, life for close to 50 years. Hmm. And when you have something like that, somebody, I mean, you can't, I can't even find the words to describe that connection. You know, it's got to be past life. I don't, whatever you want to say, it is so a soul connection. So what came up for me and I don't, and it was a visualization that here she was out here and Linda, of course, you know, I'm talking about Linda. Oh. Here she was, right? Here she was out here and we had this beautiful home in uh, looking over the sound, the Puget Sound, right? And it, it's just so vivid. I don't want to take up a lot of time with it, but it was, I could see it so clearly and attached to that property was a complete 4,000 square foot, the Transformation Network Studio and Retreat Center. Oh, beautiful. Now, Tell us about the trick to this, because here's what happens. And let's, and that leads us to number four. See, I'm going to hold that vision. Yep. I am going to hold that vision. I am not going to go to what most of us do. Wow, that's ridiculous. How's that going to happen? You know, like Linda's in New Jersey, blah, 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 blah. really, Edmonds or someplace like that, the Puget, 4,000 square foot, like now it's a retreat center. Right. And Linda's running the retreat center because she's masterful at that. OK. And then what else is in the picture? These little doggies. You see, that's how clear that came up in that short period of time for me. And it really did surprise me. I love that. OK. And so let's let's flesh this out. We see this beautiful, heartfelt dream in our hearts. Oh, my goodness. And another step which we didn't do but which is great is to feel the feelings of living it. Yes. And that's part of holding the vision. So the way the universe works, it's all energetic. Uh, there's no getting around that. That's just the way it is. That's the truth of the matter. So uh, the more we hold the energy, the vibration, the feelings, of, of the vision, then we magnetize it in, into uh, our actual external reality. I'm going to hold it. Yes. So I, I say this all the time to people I work with. Don't pay attention to reality. In quotes, reality. Reality is temporary. It's only what has happened so far. It's only what's the reflection of your energy so far. 
it's it's constantly changing it's constantly in metamorphosis as you are in metamorphosis so is the the reflection back to you in your external reality so just don't pay attention <laughs> just don't pay attention right this is the exact opposite of what we were always taught you know like right. you know don't daydream you need to like live in reality face the facts okay we do want to live in our truth we do want to live in our internal truth, but we just want to hold the vision and really live in the energy of what we're bringing through uh, yeah. in terms of our dreams. So we just, we, we, I invite people to live in their own world. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad we're talking about this because it really it leads to the next part. See, I know that I've moved up the ladder a little bit about number four, where, where you talk about honor. I know I've moved up the ladder a little bit about honor yourself when I can have that heartfelt vision. Now, I, I am, um, I am visually, I, I am oriented towards seeing things. People say that can't be true. You've got to be audible. No, I'm not. I do talk, but if you understood a little bit about what happens up here, that was such a vivid realization. I could even tell you the color of the helipad for the helicopter that brings all you all in. Oh, amazing. Right? I don't know how many seconds that took, but I, it just got so very clear about it. But honoring oneself, this next one and trusting oneself, I think, I'm sorry, I think this is where the rubber meets the road. Can you talk about that? Yeah, talking about honoring is one of my favorite topics. And I'll just briefly explain how I came into the practice of honoring uh, during my clinical education for my PhD. Uh, one of my mentors was an amazing therapist named Michael White, and uh, he, he's, he's on the other side now in heaven, but uh, he was Australian and just a wonderful man, very humane, and I was reading one of his therapy transcripts, uh, and it was with a transgendered client, and we all know how challenging that path is. And one of the first things Michael White said to this client was, how can I honor you? Yeah. And I nearly burst into tears when I read that. Um, I think because we, we really live in a culture where honoring is not the dominant orientation towards people. Mm -hmm. uh, probably you would say it's sort of the opposite. There's a lot of dishonoring in our culture. So it's okay, we're here to flip that. We're here to be way showers. Uh, so what, what does honoring, and it's different for everybody. I could ask you, Dr. Pat, what does that mean to you? How, how do you honor yourself? I, I, I'm gonna give you a short answer because I want you to continue because the story that you just shared about Michael was, I mean, my gosh. What I love about this conversation is that I don't see it as a beginning and an end point. The journey to trust myself came to me when I realized I'm trusting myself and you can, you all can pick out whatever language you want, God, Allah, higher power, whatever it is, you know, Ganesh, whatever it is, your understanding of that energy life force. And in shamanism, we know it's an energy life force. We know. We know we're not the pilots all the time. And so this idea of trusting myself came to me when I, when I decided to walk away from drugs and alcohol and go into recovery in 1990. And what happened to me was I had to shift from total mistrust in everything. But at the top of the list, I had to entertain the fact that this is a benevolent universe, mm. not a malevolent universe, you see? Yeah. That was the cornerstone for me. And once I started on that journey, I realized I'm a key player in my own life. And I cannot, to take the words of my mentor who passed away in 1999 on a trip I was supposed to be on with her in a car accident, she said, Pat, you are never going to be able to take anyone to any place you have not gone yourself. Yeah. Right. I can sit here today and talk to you because this has been a journey for me. Yeah. And I do believe today I honor myself. I trust myself because I trust 
the laws of the universe? Perfectly no, Dr. Tassel, come on. Every day, like I explained to you during the break, these past two days, I had to ask myself, as Mary Louise Smith said to me a lot, one of my best bosses, Patricia, what part of the problem are you? So this to me, this bridge between my human self and the energy life force, magic, God, whatever you believe in, that is the key to my, to my existence today. When I'm aligned, everything's aligned. When I'm not, the sky is falling. Yes, I really love that you brought up trusting life. That's one of my favorite mantras. I trust life. I trust life. And and again, I, I just like kind of getting into the body. When I say that in my body, and I invite anyone listening, if it's resonant, to just close your eyes and just say, I trust life. How does that feel? Does it feel like a relief that you, you know, I love that phrase. <laughs> Uh, Jesus, take the wheel. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, you know, surrender, accept, trust. Um, everything that's coming in is for my highest and best and for everyone else's highest and best. And we usually see that, right? When we look back, we look back at the most challenging, painful situations in our life that to our human were so hard. And the human would not have chosen them. Yep. But on the other side of those situations, there are usually so many gifts that we wouldn't want to give up. Look, I know on your show, you're going to take this to a whole nother level. The other thing I think that, and I'd like to you to talk about this here, you know, when we're talking about honor yourself, trust yourself, you are the authority in your life. I love the way you phrase that. And this is the principle number four. You know, what I also have come to learn is this. I used to believe, I don't know what year, so don't even ask me. But there was a part of my life where I held the belief that the universe was continuing to play cosmic jokes on me every day. Oh, give her the promotion. But wait a minute, you have to send her up to a place where no single people live, right? The cosmic joke idea. Mm. Now, I don't. Now, I don't, be I believe in this thing. And I say it over and over again. I know that my life's path, whatever you want to call it, you or me, what your, my life's path right now, I am so aligned and on track. Nothing is going to be able to take me off because I do not believe in a universe or in energy that would take you this far and not help you finish the journey. I totally, That's a cosmic joke. I totally <laughs> agree. And, and it is, I think we can just call a spade a spade. It is every day a leap of faith. Totally is. Right? We don't, there are no guarantees. We don't know exactly how it's all going to unfold. So we, we live in faith. And it's just a knowingness we have, right? That I'm taking this leap of faith. I'm trusting, I'm trusting myself. I'm trusting life. I'm trusting spirit. I'm jumping off that diving board into the deep end. Exactly. And, you know, that's really, you know, that brings it full, full fold, really, for us to talk about this. Because you see this idea of metamorphosis. When we're talking about metamorphosis and we're talking about that journey, one of the things I think you're going to guide people through is the fact that there are steps that we take, even if they don't look like the perfect steps, they are, right? That wrong phone number I dialed 24 years ago was not, a, 20 years ago was not a wrong phone number. You know, the creation of the transformation network, because my friend bounced a $2,200 check and the station only came after me to start a net. That was not a mistake. But, you know, I could have entered that and said, oh, my God, what a resentment I have towards him, towards Chris. But I didn't. In 2009, I just looked at Chris and I said, I'll send you a check. We'll start a network. I had no idea how that was going to work out. 
that's yeah. what I hope we can help people with. Yes. I think what you're saying is there are no mistakes. Everything that happens is divinely orchestrated it all for for the highest and best i love it dr tassel thank you so much for today again please give out your website and let us know what you want to leave us with your personal message please what's your personal message well there's so many i could call upon but <laughs> I'll say, you know uh, th this is my favorite right now lead with your magic trust the unseen and experience quantum leaps in your life. How are we going to be able to keep up and find you? Well, and I wanted to just mention, I'm launching a new program called the metamorphosis journey. It starts uh, in late September. It runs for 12 weeks. And we are going to be doing such juicy stuff, uh, shamanic journeying, spirit animal invocation, guided meditations, connection with our higher self. And it's just going to be a, a feast, a buffet of transformative <laughs> practices and really about you connecting back in with your own magic. I'm right there with you. And again, this is late September. I do believe it's September 29th, but I want to just encourage you all go to Dr. Tassel and let me just make sure I spell it. Dr. D.R. Tassel, T-A-S-S-E-L. That's S is in Sam, S is in Sam, E-L, drtassel.com. When you get there, there's just so much more there. There's everything about who she is, her story, what she's doing, what she has called to do in the spirit of her mission and to understand what it means to live in a world consciously. Dr. Tassel, thank you so much. I'm so excited. I'm really looking forward to the show and all of the things that you're creating. Thank you so much, Dr. Pat. You are such an amazing woman and a, a wonderful role model, and I'm honored to know you. I'm telling you, natural and supernatural. That's what we she's <laughs> That's what's going to be happening on our show. And by the way, yes. Okay. Thank you all for mentioning. It is on transformationtalkradio.com. And yes, it is. It's going to be live streaming video. Yes, you're going to be able to listen to it. All of the above, just like we're doing now. That's what's going to be. Thank you so much for everything. I can't wait to see what's next. I want to thank Jacob. Thank you, Jacob, for doing what you do. And Benny, thank you as usual. And most importantly to you all, the best audience on the planet, get your metamorphosis on with Dr. Tassel. All right, we'll see you next time. <laughs>